we go. Okay, so I cannot hear you now. I cannot hear you. So we got a lot of love going on over here on I Said It uh, <laughs> at the square table. Okay, I'm sorry. Good. Peace and blessings. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I want to see you a little bit better, though. Oh, yeah, I don't know what. Okay, I don't know what happened. Like, that's the universe right there. It just literally <laughs> took my light away and gave me back light. I don't know. That's what it do. Like, I got all types of light on me right now. And we open two shades, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's doing a whole lot. It's coming in dark and light and dark and light. Yeah, that's so weird. Okay, let me fix that real quick. Okay. But um, yeah, that's definitely, fine. you know. Um, uh, that is what we call technical difficulties. Okay, guys. So, you know. Nothing to worry about. We're going to be back in a second as we uh, fix the lighting issue to the left side or the right side of your screen. But we definitely have a really good show set up for you guys on today. I'm really, really excited about the guests that we have awaiting to enter the room. So just stay tuned just a little bit with us. Oh, As I said, it makes it happen. All right, I literally have like 10, 5, 8 lights on me like right now. It's ridiculous. Maybe it's too much. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, um, like Mimi just said, you know, welcome to the square table. You already know where y'all get back in your square, only at the square table. Myself, celebrity interviewer, I said it and the legendary Mimi Acosta. Thank you for being here again with me, Queen. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Yes, yes, likewise. And let me be the first person to do what I know to do, put my devices on mute. So everyone, please put your devices on mute. Um, Make sure. Please. Yeah, Don't yeah, do what yeah. I just did. <laughs> I know we're always the first ones to say, put your phones on mute. And then we'll turn right. around and, that's it. Okay. <laughs> I swear these phones be really having a matter in their own. They, they actually getting smart. These AIs, robots out here. It's a little bit, it's yeah, becoming but, um, a little bit too much, <laughs> but it's all good. We got to run with that. We even have to roll with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we really do. We need to do a show about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know how we do it. Definitely. I'm about it. Let's go. But yeah, so thank you for everyone that's tuned in today. You know, we're very grateful to have everyone that's tuned in with me and Mimi. And like she said earlier, when I was trying to fix my lighting, you know, we have some very special guests, like always, every month, always grateful to have people within the industry and the community to come on this show and just share their thoughts, opinions, and um, their wisdom about whatever the subject matter may be for this Thursday, always last Thursday of every month, if y'all didn't know by now. You know what I'm saying? Thank, Thank you for you. all our loyal audience that always be checking in. We always appreciate you. See, I don't know what's up with that. Like, why the light keep going in and out? We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it right. happen. I'm looking at all types of light right now. I'm going, if it was for these sunglasses, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so with no further ado, please allow me to start bringing in these beautiful guests of ours and talented people that we have on deck. So one by one, first I'm gonna bring in all the way from California, holding it down, my good friend, Twix. Welcome to the show, Queen. Let me make sure I'm unmuted, right? <laughs> How's everybody? And thank you, I appreciate the opportunity of being on tonight's panel. It's such an important topic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being here today, Twix. All the way You're from welcome. Cali. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Gee. California is definitely in the building. So thank you, uh, the TMP oh. Village, as uh, grateful for this opportunity. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Salute to the whole village. You already know. Yeah. TMP in the house. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so much love to everybody. There's too many names to drop right now. So I'm going to have to. Don't uh, worry. Yeah. We'll do that <laughs> another time. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they know it's all it's one love, it's all love. Um, Absolutely. But next, coming up, you know what I mean? Um, we want to bring all the way from the ATL, you know what I'm saying? Um, very talented artist. I want to bring her in. Hi. <laughs> peace, peace. Yes, the beautiful peace. Mickey Star, MIA <laughs> Entertainment artist, baby. She's doing big things. Uh huh. <laughs> Absolutely. Grateful to have you here, Queen. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's about to be a good show. Another great show. Mm -hmm. And then, last but not least, um, I actually don't even know where my brother's from, but maybe he can tell you if he like to. <laughs> but bring it in. Last but not least, good brother, King Mike P. Wait. Just Mike P. That works. So, and this is our <laughs> third. Uh, Currently, I'm from Tom's River, New Jersey. Okay, New Jersey. I'm now. originally from Essex County, North Jersey. Oh. And that's where it all started. Okay. okay, New Jersey. I went through the turnpike before. And survived. All right, right. All right. <laughs> all and survived. But that's all I know about New Jersey. I went through that turnpike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It was expensive too. They taxing. Oh, they are. You, you, <laughs> you hook it up to the Easy Pass, and when your trip is finished, suddenly you're thirty dollars poorer. Oh wow! Oh, oh yeah, okay. They, they, they hit you for every exit. Oh, oh. Florida, well, just learned, way. Just learned something new today. Glad I mentioned it. That's how y'all save thirty dollars with the Turnpike in New Jersey when you're passing through. But me, me, man, yes, could you sir. please tell our guests what today's subject is? And after you say that, then, we you know, of course, you know, please tell them where you're from, where you reside, who you are, if they didn't know. Okay, well, today's topic is addiction to prescription drugs. Um, and this, this is a very interesting topic. And, and of course, you know, we're going to talk more about it. But um. My name is Mimi Acosta. I am originally from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. I've been living here in Maryland since 2000. Listen to me, listen, in Maryland. I came via Maryland, D.C., Maryland. Uh, came to Georgia in 2002, have been here since. Absolutely love it. Um, I have a TV, film, and music productions company. So I have been in the, I've been in the industry in total over 35 years. Um, yeah. So now I'm just um, working on some film projects. I've got a project, a real life story um, called A Roommate's Mission. And then I have a transgender reality show that is also in the making. Um, it's called Who's Got the Flavor Now? I'm working with the beautiful Mickey Star. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and I'm taking her <laughs> to some different heights as well. Right now we're in the studio working on her EP. So um, big things, big things to come, big things to come. So, yeah, I'll pass the buck. I'll pass the buck. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with that being said, Twix, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you where you represented right now? Well, um, I am definitely a California bear. So I'm coming to you all from California. And Twix Mixed Productions was, was started because I fell in love with the indie community. I had a friend that was out there really trying to make it happen. And it seems like even though, no matter how talented a person is, if you don't have the right people looking at you, it's just a lot of talent. So I really I had a sensitivity for that, being I had um, previous years of going out and promoting for other artists, doing other things. Um, I just took a, a love for it and created Twix Mix Productions, started doing more podcasting and helping artists get stages. So I would go out and get contracts with different venues all over Los Angeles and set up showcases for artists to have an opportunity to one, um, you know, sharpen their skills because that's one thing that you're always in the studio, you're doing your videos, this and that, you know, but you never have a chance to really get on that stage in front of a crowd. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, to give them that opportunity. Um, now I'm doing more of the IG live shows where I love to, again, support everything indie. And um, I'm enjoying it a lot. So soon I'll get back to doing the, the live shows. But for now, it's the I, IG Live. Beautiful. 
Okay, yeah. absolutely. How can people support you? How can they find you real quick if they want to support Definitely. you? Definitely. Yes, thank you. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Tanika Allen, or you can find Twix Mix Productions. Remember that it's double X's, so T-W-I-X-X and then M-I-X-X. Um, you can also find me on um, Instagram at Foursquare Music, as well as Twix Mix Productions underscore underscore. And just DM me. My a business line is available. My email is available. Um, DM me and or call text so that we can get you scheduled for our next show. Nice. Oh, cool. Thank yeah. you so much for that. You're congratulations welcome. Congratulations to you. Much, much yes. love. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To move down to, uh, absolutely. Um, to Mickey Stark, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how people can support you? <laughs> Yes, my name is Mickey Starr. I'm a new artist. I do pop and R&B music. I do a little bit of acting and modeling as well. And I'm just excited for this journey to see where else it goes. Yes. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> how can people support you? I mean, how can they uh, find any of your upcoming music? Is there any music you can download that help yes. support you right now? I songs out right now the first song is like me and then the other song is into the night and then also all i need all i need is like a caribbean vibe type song is really good but i'm on all platforms apple music soundcloud youtube i'm on instagram too my instagram is underscore itsss dot mickey star so okay absolutely and welcome to the industry <laughs> i'm brand about. new <laughs> Yeah, well, you you know, you got a great, great, great manager, coach, leader, yes. mentor, you know, being Mimi. You can, you can't yes, go yes. And then we have our co-manager, Miss Liz, who is also I watching the show this evening. So, Mother Liz, much love to you. <laughs> okay, congratulations. And thank you again, Mickey. And thank then, you. again, last but not least, Brother Mike, Mike P., if you can tell us, you know what I mean, again, where you from, how people can support, you know what I mean, the, your mission and, you know what I mean, what it is that you want more people to um, just be aware of? Well, for the time being, uh, my girlfriend lost her oldest son. Oh, uh, sorry. Rutgers graduate, mm -hmm. had a degree in music to a uh, heroin overdose uh, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name was Nicholas. And uh, I tried to reach him and, you know, he told me nobody knows his pain. And I tried to explain that heroin's been around for a thousand years and you're not the first person to invent this stuff. And he said, but yeah. nobody knows my pain. And six months later, he was dead. Hmm. So uh, we formed in his honor a not-for-profit and uh, we have uh, a local band that plays. We, we sponsor a, a Rock for Awareness Music Festival uh, the first Saturday in October in Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. That's where Nicholas grew up at. Okay. I'm from North Jersey. And uh, as I said earlier, it, it took me 40 years to get 26 years sobriety um i was addicted to any anything that ended in e mm. the trick to being clean and sober is you have to want it you can't do it for anybody else you have to want it for yourself because it, it, it's a selfish addiction uh when i said it all begins with alcohol you know, when alcohol is not hard enough to cure what it what is currently ailing you, it's also a gateway drug that leads to other things. Um, where you were stating that you're you're keeping a finger pointed at prescription medication. Well, what do you wash that down with? Mm. And a lot yeah. of a lot of times it's the alcohol, the prescription meds, and the thing that our foundation uh, is recognizing or trying to get people to recognize is how young young people who go from taking antidepressants and 
uh, tranquilizers, sleeping medications, how they all go from prescribed medicines to harder and worse things that work faster. Because, you know, let, let's face it, in today's world, nobody wants to wait six months for the results. They want it now. They don't. They want it 10 seconds from now. Right. That's where hey, the battle uh, comes from. Absolutely. Um, real quick, um, excuse me to cut you off, um, um, Mr. P. You know what I'm saying? Um, how can they uh, support that foundation that you helped begin? Uh, we're on Facebook. It's the Nicholas Udanish Foundation. Um, let me see. We have, uh, God, I'm totally unprepared. Um, it's okay, it's okay. And we're, we're on Facebook and I, I have some information. If you take a break, I'll run and get the other information I have. Uh, okay. We're affiliated with a radio station here in New Jersey, uh, 101.5. And one of the, the DJs there, his name is Bill Spadia. He promotes our, our cause. Uh, the prosecutor in Ocean County tells us that 12 year olds are sniffing dope. And I mean, if they're doing it that young, Mm -hmm. They're not even getting a chance to get on prescription medicines yet. So what we do is we bring curriculum into the school system for children and adult children uh, and teachers to school the teachers how to spot the kids. Because mm -hmm. it all starts with behavior and it goes downhill from there. Mm -hmm. And as we mature, prescription medications... You know, you break an arm, hurt your back or something, the doctor gives you a couple of pills and that'll hold you over for two weeks and then they cut you off. What do you do then? Yeah, and man, that's a that's a good question. And mm -hmm. let me stop you right there, please, respectfully, you know, as we just continue to go around the table so that, you know, we can continue to just, um by protocol, just meet me, you know what I mean? Um, what is it that you really think about this subject when you hear that, the, um, when you hear about prescription drugs addiction, such a deep subject. And thanks, Mike, for giving us a little bit more insight to the show. You know I me mean? before we really get deep, deep into this conversation. You feel me? But um, Mimi, you know, what does this topic mean to you? Well, it's really interesting because decades ago, and I'm going to say decades because my, my daughter is over 30. But um, when she was little, I want to say when she was probably about five years old in kindergarten, I found myself doing a whole lot of stuff. In, not just in the industry, but I was working for the government. I was raising her. I had a lot of stuff going on. And I used to have issues sleeping at night. So I don't know what it is that got into me that I just decided that Benadryl is, mm -hmm. is a good something to take to go to sleep. And then I found myself taking Benadryl every night. And I'm not going to say it was 30, 60, or 90 days, but I know that I was on Benadryl like it was nothing. And if I had like 10 or 15 left in the bottle, it was time to go get me another bottle. And one day I just found myself like really so feeling so hooked on this thing. And I had to really like, because, you know, I've always been into God and I always have called God into my life about everything and anything that I do. And I was just like, God, you know what? This is what I need you to do for me. I need you to take this thing off of my, my system because this is not something that I need to go to sleep. I just need to take my butt to sleep, you know, and take the rest that I need and make it happen. And before you know it, I just stopped. I just weaned myself out of it. But it was just so interesting that I was like, you know, just like Mr. You know, just like Mr. P said, um, you know, he said, you got to have to want to stop doing something in order to stop doing it. And I really wanted to stop because I was like, I was really addicted. And I, I you know, you don't think of it that way, but that's really what it was. It was an addiction. I found myself addicted to it. It's almost like, you know, like drinking Coke. And you got to have some people just got to have a, 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 you know, a can of Coke every single morning or, you know, and then I found myself getting into, you know, drinking Coke as well. And I was like, wait a minute, I can stop this. Give me a bottle of water and put some lemon in it and keep it pushing, you know. So, you know, it, right. you can become addicted to, to many things. It doesn't just have to be um, prescription drugs, but, you know, over the counter stuff like Benadryl, you know, just because I just wanted to get that fixed to go to sleep, you know, and get a good night rest. But I found myself every day just being like dragging myself into my day because that's what it does, you know. But um, yeah, 
yeah, so the experience, um, the experience wasn't wasn't good for me, um, but I had to get away from it, and I did, and I just, I, I put it in my mind that I have to stop it, and I stopped, and 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 I thank God that I did, and that's kind of like you know where I stopped the book, you know, because right. it could have it could have led to other things. Oh yeah, most definitely. I'm glad you was able to kick the B. Yes, for sure. Because- because um that's serious, you know what I mean? And, and like you say, it could have laid down another path and thank God yes. it didn't. Yes. It's all from the source of you just trying to get some sleep, you know what I'm saying? Because right. we push our feet so hard, you know what I mean? Try to find a way to relax. Yeah. So yes. But yeah, when I think of this subject though, me, me, um, and mm-hmm. everyone, I, I just, you know, come to mind um uh, unscripted. I don't I, I just always just speak, you know, whatever I feel at this moment, you know what I mean? And just naturally, I've, I've been around a lot of people, you know what I mean? I've been privileged to, you know, have everyone who's here is very important today, you know what I mean? Yes. And, um, you know, I, I see, and I've had, you know, I used to be addicted to, you know, smoking weed, like I needed to smoke a blunt to, you yes. know, when I wake up and I need to smoke a blunt before I went to sleep. And I did that for many, 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 many years. <laughs> and I never did it publicly. And no one never, ever knew unless you just knew me on a personal level. I never put it out there in the public. I, people at work, you know what I'm saying, if they knew, they knew, you know what I'm saying, but I never spoke about it openly when I did my shows, when I've been in this industry for over 20 years, I never spoke about it publicly because mm-hmm. I never wanted to mess up anything or close a door that may be open for me, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. as someone who may discriminate against me having a, a weed addiction, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know, I did it for over 20 years, but you know, I retired now, you know what I'm saying, but <laughs> It's still all love for anyone that chooses to do that because I don't really think that it's something wrong. I just think that, you know what I mean, when it comes to prescription drugs, that's a lot more serious. And that's something that can really take your life. You know what I mean? And a lot of people overdose from that. And people, you know what I'm saying, don't really know where to go. You know what I mean? We've had so many um, people who's been on this earth speak about it. And I'm just going to name um, two. Well, one, I don't name Juice World and he because he's from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? He was a famous rapper who unfortunately was said that he overdosed at the airport because they found prescription drugs on him and he didn't want to go to jail. So he took his own life and just went on and just, you know what I mean, took the, the pills and allegedly, you know what I mean? I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Only God knows and the people that were there mm-hmm. or people that told the story. But you know what I mean? But he actually spoke about that in his music and tried to bring awareness along with um, what's the guy, Triple X, um, Extension. Oh yes, 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 yes. Somebody help me out. What's his name? You Extent, know his name? Extentation or extentacion? Well, it's, to me, it's yeah, always been like yeah. in Spanish. But yeah, the triple X, the rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he helped bring awareness to the sadness and depression that comes with prescription drugs and things. So those was two people that unfortunately aren't here on Earth anymore. But they and were very young, and they took the um the 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 courage and you know took on the battle to just try to help spread the message because they know how relevant it is to be addicted to prescription drugs, to be addicted to lean things is very, you know, like we always hear Percocet and stuff like that in mm-hmm. the music, in the rap music. And that's become very popular because that just means that that's what they doing. You know, a lot of these young folks in certain areas. So, you know, I felt like mm-hmm. today is a, a perfect topic to help some of these people that may um, need to get away from it. Just like people drink coffee every morning. Yes. Um, um, Mickey, you know, what does this mean to you when speaking about a subject like this? What comes to your mind? Um, I feel like honestly, I feel like honestly, prescription drugs like anything that's like Adderall or Percocets, like anything that's really pills, it's just it's really bad for you, and I feel like it's just like no good in doing them. Mm-hmm. And it's like some people, they just don't have the aware that they're doing something bad because they get so hooked on the feeling and they just do it. And it's like they don't know it's bad for them, but they're so addicted to it. But yeah, it's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how have you been able to, you know, I mean, just knowing that and you being a young lady um, and around, you know, a lot of maybe your peers are, you know, on music and they talk about this, you know, what I mean. So how does that make you feel or what would you say to them, you know what I'm saying, other than what you just said? I mean, I can't stop anybody from doing it. It's just like, I feel like as long as I don't do it, I'm good, but I can help somebody out if they have an addiction. I know I could try my best, but you know, it takes a strong mindset to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Well, thank you for that. Um, Mike thank P, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, sorry to cut you off early. We just had to get back to protocol, you know what I mean? Continue to go around the table and stuff. But, you know, again, you were speaking about some really deep things, you know what I mean? Um, um, part of it being the foundation of the foundation that you started in reference to the young man, Nicholas, who um, lost his life to an overdose. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? If you can just speak a little bit more about what is this subject in general? What does this mean to you, you know, when you hear addiction to prescription drugs and side effects? Well, the prescription medicines are just the beginning. And when I say that, I, I had a close friend, uh, his name was John, and he was a bodybuilder, and, you know, he would compete in bodybuilding events, and he hurt his back on his job. Now, he, he was clean and sober off of alcohol for 15 years. He hurt his back on his job. Hmm. After two months, his doctor cut him off of painkillers, and he overdosed uh, three months after that because he couldn't handle wow, the pain. Three, three, three months? Wow. Three months. Oh, and I mean, the guy, he was a bodybuilder. He was huge. He, he watched his diet, you know. He ate. He was one of the, those guys that peeled the skin off chicken. Who hmm. the heck does that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? No, he, he he would watch his diet, he was mm-hmm. off of booze, and he couldn't stand the pain. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, it, it starts like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, for me, uh, my mom was an active alcoholic. She drank herself to death in 1991. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember the, the arguments between my mom and dad. You know, and my dad said, the doctor said, if you don't stop drinking, you're going to die. Well, she drank herself to death. So I have the gene. Both of my sisters have the gene. Okay. And my alcoholism led to all kinds of drug use. And it, 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 it started out with a beer. And I liked it. And then... Like the Benadryl, I couldn't sleep at night. So then it became the beer and maybe some pills, uh, Dalmain or uh, some of the other more Ambien, mm-hmm. some of the right. other more popular sleep aids. Mm-hmm. When that doesn't work, when the doctor cuts you off, then you move on to something else. And it, it starts with prescription medication, and it was all open and honest, and then it gets dirty. Hmm. And then, you know, you, you cover it up. You start with one Benadryl, then you take in three, then you, listen, I'm clean and sober, and I, I, I'll be honest, I've taken a Benadryl to help get to sleep at night. <laughs> okay, because I work the kind of job where <laughs> you're running around the clock. Especially in the summertime. I, I deliver seafood, you know, the fish never sleep. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you you have to be absolutely aware. And you know, there, there's one thing that my my little nephew was at uh our grandmother's house and I caught him going through her medicine cabinet. Oh mm. Look how at, was he was uh, 14. Ouch. Going through the medicine cabinet to see what it could get. Oh. I mean, this is going back to 1978. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's incredible. That's just really sad. Um, yeah, one, one of your friends comes over to your house and asks to use your bathroom. And they can yeah. just open out your medicine cabinet, see what you got. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and, and again, it's all connected. Alcohol, prescription medications, mm-hmm. or stuff. It's all connected. Yeah, no, nah, um, definitely, definitely. And appreciate you sharing that, um, Mike and Twix and Mickey. Um, man, this is very serious subject, you know what I mean? And um you know, for all those that's watching, please, you know what I'm saying, you welcome to chat with us too if you have any, 
you know, opinions or, you know, you just want to say something based on what we've already said or just want to add to the, um, the conversation. And make sure you all share this video, too, because, you know, we definitely need to just help continue get the word out because this mm -hmm. is not something that they, and when I say they, y'all know who they are, but mm -hmm. wants to talk about on public platforms because the pharmaceutical in industry is huge, you know what I'm saying, for a reason. And a lot of people, unfortunately, have lost their life behind having huge platforms and basically, quote unquote, saying too much or trying to challenge the beast or challenge the, the um, you know, that, that, that industry, you know what I'm saying? So um, with that being said, you know, we, we all, if, they, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And so we all, you know, are, is, I'm grateful for everyone's courage here tonight to be able to want to speak about this subject. Uh, we're going to take a little break, but when we come right back, you know what I'm saying? You already know we're going to get right back into this, you know, just give people a chance to, you know what I mean, tell their friends what's happening over here at the square table and, um, you know, share this video. But, you know, like Mimi said earlier, you know, we got to pay the bills, you know what I'm saying, share some information, things that's upcoming, and um, whatever like that. So we're going to be right back. Don't go far. If you do, you're going to miss out on some great, great, great information. And Mike's going to actually find that information about his foundation. So he's going to be able to share that, too. So we'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs>
Welcome, welcome back to everyone that has been tuned in so far. You know what I mean? That was our little halftime break. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate everyone that's um, been sharing this video. We still got the little halftime music going, though. Yeah, I know. I'm digging this little music. You know, I just found it. <laughs> I like it. I like it, actually. Yeah, it's smooth. We came in real gentle like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I was over here jamming. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, definitely let us um bring back all our guests. You know what I mean? Thank you again for everyone that's here today with us. Again, we have Brother Frank P. Mike P. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike P. I said Frank P. That's okay. <laughs> Mike uh, P. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great, great. How can I uh, shoot this to you? Can I send it to you in the email? Um, matter of fact, yeah, send it to, um, uh, text it to me. Text it to me, please. And during the show, and welcome back, Queen Twix. Um, but yeah, um, if you can text that to me, Mike, then you know what I mean. Um, I try to during this by the end of the show, I'll be able to put it on the screen to add it to the show so it'll be locked in. So whenever somebody sees this show, they'll be able to see that flyer. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, where do we leave off? Where do we leave off? Me, me. It's so much. So I had written down a couple of little things earlier because you know, the, the thing about it is that until we come across certain topic matters and we start doing our own research, we don't know everything. And it's just so interesting, the things that you learn, um, because my experience was so long ago. And it's not that, that I don't really pay attention when it happens to others, but it's like, I know what it took for me to get off of it. And it was like simple prayer and just like, okay, I have this little girl that I'm raising. What am I doing? You know, mm -hmm. so it was just one of those things where for me, it was just that reality check where I have someone that's depending on me and I need to check myself and just stop what I'm doing and, and move forward and make things happen for myself. For other people, they have different reasons for doing it. Um, and um, I wrote down some side effects uh, to what happens when you're addicted to prescription drugs. And, um, you know, as many know, I have a, a brother that I lost to suicide in 2016. And he had went through depression. He was diabetic. He had a lot of stuff that he had going on. And um, we didn't see it coming. So when it happened, it was just one of those things like, okay, where the heck does this come from? But I'm here reading like all this stuff. Like, you know, um, we're talking about depression, uh, confusion, excess sweating, uh, constipation, hypertension, um, impaired, you know, coordination, impaired judgment. Uh, we also have long-term effects that are even deeper when you're talking about, and these are things that my brother experienced, and I'm reading this, and I'm just like, whoa, um, because he did go through it. Social isolation, uh, withdrawing from previously enjoyable activities, because we used to love going and play bowl, you know, bowl and playing pool and doing all these different things, and all of a sudden, we just sort of kind of like lost him, like just to, I'm good. You guys got this. Go do your thing, you know. Um, homelessness, because he experienced that as well. We had to bring him back home. Joblessness. Mm -hmm. So there is so much. There is a lot that goes to this, you know? And I'm just like, wow. Like when I was just sitting back thinking that I was having a moment and people are going through their experiences and, and things are happening to folks or every minute of the news, we're listening to, okay, someone passed away because they overdosed or they're going through depression or they were hooked on drugs. It's like, it's so common now that every time I see something on the news or I hear of someone overdosing, I'm kind of like frozen, like, okay, you know, God be with them and, and you know, prayers to their families. And then you just, you move on. Like we've become really kind of like numb to, to, to the norm because this has kind of like become the norm. And it's sad to say, but it's the truth. You know, because right. we don't have a lot of people that are, you know, we don't, we don't have a lot of hands, you know. Well, this is the thing. There's a lot of people that don't want to face the music. They don't want to face the fact that they have a problem and they need help. So that's what's happening, too. A lot of people are trying to um, diagnose this on their own. Oh, I got this. Oh, I'm OK. Oh, I don't have a problem when you really do, you know. And then, of course, you have families that are coming together 
and trying to make it happen for them. And they're thinking, oh gosh, you guys are all in my business. And then they isolate themselves. And then before you know it, you no longer have that person. You know, and it's a hard thing to do when you're forcing people to try to get help and they don't want to be helped. And like Mr. Mike P said, unless you want to be helped, you're not going to be helped. You know, so it, it's really, really sad. So there is, and I'm going to just put it out there now, there is a national um, drug and alcohol treatment hotline, which is 1-800-662-HELP. Okay, 1-800-662-HELP. And those numbers are 1-800-662-4357 for anyone that is out there battling, needs assistance, don't know where to start, don't want people in your business. Well, guess what? You got an 800 number that you can call and speak to somebody and get the help that you need. Right. Absolutely. And thank you for that um, information because that's very, very important yes. um, information that people you know, need to hear. Yes. Mm. Yes, yes. Whew. Yeah, again, um, first, my condolences to your brother, always. Thank you. Know you. Thank you. Um, definitely, you know what I mean? Um, me personally, I can't say that I've, I've lost a lot of people in my life, but none that I know of that was from prescription drugs. But again, you know what I mean? This was still dear to heart to me, this subject, just because, you know, I'm like, anytime somebody passed, I feel some type of way. I didn't have, yes. I don't have to know you like that. I just feel like, you know, I understand it's part of the cycle of life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Life and death, but still it just feels some type of way when people die from diseases or things that anything that could be prevented, you yes. know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel really bad. Yeah. With that being said, I'm just going to pass the mic, you know, to our guests because this is the reason why we're here. Cause you know what I mean? I really want to hear more from you all. And I want yes. the people to hear from me. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm going to pass the mic to Mickey and put you in the hot seat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, you know, anything else, you know, based on what everyone has said thus far um, tonight, you know, what would you like to add to the subject? Um, I was just thinking about how early. Okay. I think we lost you in the hearing. Hello? There you go. I can hear I can you. Hear you now. Okay, so I remember when I was younger, I have ADHD. So when I was younger, the doctors would put me on a Adderall to calm me down. And it's like, it's so crazy because I remember when I was younger, I took it like at least a few times and it would make me feel like a zombie. So it was like, I knew it wasn't good for me. So it's like, I remember every morning at school, like before school, my mom would try to force me to take it and I would take the pills and I would literally hide them or I would put them in my drawer. And it was like, I just knew it wasn't right. And I feel like that's another topic that people should talk about is how like doctors put younger kids on prescription drugs. And it's like, they get it. some kids get addicted to it. I didn't, luckily I wasn't one of those that got addicted to it, but mm -hmm. I feel like some kids do get addicted to it at a young age because they're prescribed and they think it helps ADHD, but it doesn't help ADHD. I feel like, because I feel like God made me to be a person that's really hyper. So it's like, when I was on it, I already felt like I was not myself, you know? Right. Yeah. And now yeah, you're so good. You're so good in a very good hyper way with your artistry. So that's a good thing. <laughs> we don't need uh, the Adderall and none of that no. stuff. No. Oh, my gosh. That was so horrible when I was on it. It was crazy. Never again. I don't know yeah. why they described that to me. <laughs> so how do you think that you avoided becoming maybe addicted to it or, or wanting to turn back to it? I didn't like the feeling of it. It just made me feel like a zombie. It, it made me feel like I was, like, when I think about it, I was actually high off of a pill. And I mm -hmm. wasn't realizing I was because I was too young. But now that I'm older, I'm like, dang, I, they had me dope off medicine. And I'm like, ew, that's, mm -mm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, thank God, you know, you was able to um, not get addicted to it because all it takes is one time sometimes when it comes to anything, whether it's crack, cocaine, heroin, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, prescription drugs, like your body just becomes, you know what I'm saying, feeling like it wants more sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thank God, you know, you, you um, don't have that, that balance in your life to where, you know, whatever it is that gets people, you know, more and more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm thankful that I didn't get addicted to it. <laughs> I didn't like the feeling at all. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah, yeah so um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to um Twix. You know, I know you um, you speak to so many people on your platform, and um, you all have some really great subjects that you talk about on all your shows. You know, you really <laughs> like to answer tonight's subject. Tonight's subject is really deep. Um, one, because, you know, when you're tucked into the science of things, you kind of understand the reason why the world is created the way that it is, especially with America being a social experiment that was lasted a lot longer than people anticipated, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that are going on in our country um, that uh, lead to this. So um, there's things embedded in our DNA where we just can't break away from it. And just like Mike P, saying that his parents, you know, or his mother rather, had an addiction to alcohol. Um, both of my parents were addicted to something, you know what I mean? And I think that what they did was they gave me a very high tolerance. And because I, I registered that very young, I really didn't have any interest in anything, not even smoking weed until I was like grown, grown, because I had to watch it because I didn't know what it was going to do. When you tell me I'm going to be addicted to something, that's the, that's a surefire way for me to not try it. Or I have to watch it. I got to see how it affects other people. I've watched things for years before I attempted it. You know what I mean? Because I want to know, am I going to sell my diapers for my baby? Am I going to sell my baby? I need to know these things. You know? <laughs> right. Right. So, but because, you know, our, it's we're in a capitalistic society. So, of course, we have to have a problem for them to create something. And this is what they do. And, and being in the entertainment industry, especially around music, um, you know, we're finding out a lot more now, right, that yes. there's writers who are told to write certain things and there's artists who are mandated to perform them, whether they're doing it or not, because it sells. So once we actually take back what we've created and start doing what we know is best, because we are definitely spiritual people and we have to tap back mm-hmm. into that and, and regain our ourselves, we got to get our spirit back and understand there were two things. We are human, but we have a spirit that lives inside of our flesh. We have to take care of our flesh so our spirit can thrive. If we don't take care of our flesh, we may as well just drink, you know, do whatever you want to do. But we have to make sure that we're giving the people the knowledge, the wisdom, the education to do that. So Mike P. King, what you are doing is so phenomenal. It's so phenomenal mm-hmm. because you're taking um, your experience and you're paying it forward and you're being preventative and you're starting at the baseline where yes. we need to start with the kids. So I, I, I really honor you with that. Um, this, you know, like Queen with the Benadryl, my first introduction with Benadryl was flying from California to Chicago. And my best friend was like, this flight is too long. I'm not into it. I'm taking a Benadryl. As soon as we sit down, by the time I wake up, we'll be there. And that's kind of like what she did. And I was like, mm, okay, but mm-hmm. Benadryl made me jittery. So that wasn't for me. Uh, I can't deal with the jitters. So I, I right. can't do it. You know what I mean? But that's what I mean by both of my parents having some sort of addiction. Both of them really being able to kick it. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for that. But I, too, lost my mom. I've lost both my parents now. My dad passed in March, and my mom passed in 2001. And um, But before they were both able to live, have a good quality of life because they stopped what was harming them. And I think watching that also gave me the wisdom that I needed to ensure that I didn't go through those same, you know, Mm -hmm. lanes. And I'm teaching my two kids that that's not it either. You know what I mean? So tonight was just so on point and I'm just so very grateful. You guys have said so many beautiful things and I think whoever listens to this now and or later is going to get so many gems out of this conversation. So I'm just really grateful to you guys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, my condolences to you, both of your yes. parents. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Mike, brother Mike, you know what I'm saying? If you can um, share a little bit more with us insight and, you know, and if you feel comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Um, like when we all had the conversation, me, you, and Christine was talking about how with you with the chromosome and how that helped lead to some of your addictions. Okay. Um, this is going to sound funny, but technically I am the third gender. 
Um, normal folks have 46 chromosomes and I have 47. Uh, it's a genetic condition that happens at when you're created in the womb. Uh, there's less testosterone than normal. So what I grew up with in my entire life was a testosterone deficiency. Um, what this means, now ladies, I have more in common with you than I have with I said it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you suffered from once a month, I suffered from every day of my life for 37 years. Uh, mm -hmm. the, mood, the mood swings, the anxiety, uh, the hot flashes, the cold flashes, the night sweats, the bouncing off the wall craziness, everything <laughs> except the mess. Respectively. <laughs> everything except the mess. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, my condition was discovered in 1997. Now, I served in the United States Army. I, I'm a retired 82nd Airborne Ranger Pathfinder. Uh, nothing was discovered then. Mm -hmm. They said when I was off duty, I was a little off, but that was it. Mm -hmm. um, in 1997, my condition was discovered. And I am what they consider 2X. Uh, men's chromosomes are XY and women's are XX and mine are XXY. Um, I grew up uh, as a late bloomer. Um, I was molested by my scoutmaster, my priest. Uh, my CYO day camp counselor. Um, these were reasons why I drank. Technically, 26 years ago, if we had this conversation, I'd have been too ashamed to tell you anything about me. Mm -hmm. um, my cure for all of that is five milligrams of testosterone a day. Um, when I first started the hormone replacement, my ex-wife said it was like somebody opened up my head and flipped on a switch that had been shut off for 37 years. Mm. Hmm. So what this all has in common with addiction is uh, at a young age, when I discovered there was something that felt better than feeling sad or lonely or depressed and that was pain mm -hmm. so i was a cutter i used to cut myself because the pain felt better than feeling sadder or lonely mm -hmm. so that said when i graduated to alcohol and prescription meds anything that made me feel different was a good thing to me mm -hmm. um God helped me open my eyes as well. I'm involved with a 12-step program. And the first step of all the 12-step programs is admitting to yourself and to God and another person that you have a problem. And then you go from there. Yes. I'm currently 63 years old, and I'm two years older than my mom ever saw it. And my dad's going to be 93 in November. Oh. And he still drives and plays golf and all of that. <laughs> Good for him. Wow. You are a walking testimony. I have to say that. Yes. You are such a blessing to this world. You know what I mean? You're not the only person out here, mm -hmm. but there's people that are in your position that feel like they are. So for you to allow yourself to be so vulnerable with us tonight, with the world tonight, someone is going to tap in and just really appreciate you for that. Um, that is incredible. And thank you. 
thank you for sharing your story. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's phenomenal. Um, I'm sorry. And thank you for that quick. Um, and I want to add too, you know what I mean? I'm sorry to just hear that um, while you were growing up, you know what I mean? People that okay. you should have been able to trust let you down. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I mean, we have these authority figures, we have guardians, we have people like priests and, you know, the people that you name, you know, when you go to camp, you know, you should be, you feel protected. You're supposed to be protected and the people that are supposed to have protected you the most really let you down. I'm just sorry, brother, that, you know what I mean, they did that to you, man, and you know what I mean? And I salute you for just being so strong and being here today to be able to just share that with us. And like Twix said, the whole world, you know what I mean? You know, for everyone that be blessed to be able to see this episode, you know what I mean? Thank you for that, brother. You know what I'm saying? I salute you. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Ooh. Can't put the camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, no. And I feel like, you know what I mean? Thank you so much, Mike, for sharing that, you know what I mean? To yes. just... Um, sum up the show today, you know what I'm saying? Because that was really deep and sad, but yes. needed, but needed, definitely mm -hmm. needed. Yes, very much so needed. Because the thing about it is that there, you know, um, like Twix said, there's a lot of people that are going through it that do not talk about the things that they're going through. Some folks are really just ashamed, you know, and they don't want, you know, family members to look at them in a certain light or friends or et cetera. But, you know, sometimes you, you, you come to grip with yourself and, you know, we're not in that age range anymore where it's like, OK, you know what, we can't talk about this. No, we can talk about it because at the end of the day, we're helping someone else. You know, we're motivating someone else. We're inspiring someone else. You know, we're letting someone else know, hey, look, you are not by yourself in this. You know, so kudos to you, you know, Mike P for, you know, the conversation, because um, I know that it's that it's not easier, but it could only get easier when you're inspiring others, you know, and, and FYI, you look very good, <laughs> you know, for someone who has been through all what you've been through, you know, you look very, very good. That means you're taking very good care of yourself. Oh, Don't stop working. That's it. Don't stop working. That's the key, right? Well, you know what it is. I, I three things come from drug addiction and alcohol addiction. They say jails, institutions, and death. Mm -hmm. And I've seen two of those things. And I don't plan on going back. I'm not in a rush. Um, for anyone that wants to get clean or wants to get sober, the hardest thing you have to do is walk into a meeting and say, hi, I'm Mike so-and-so, and... -so, and I'm an alcoholic or I'm a drug addict. Um, they Nowadays, they have a 12-step program for everything. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, there, there are so many more addictions other than just prescription meds and alcohol. Right. There, there are gambling addictions. Mm -hmm. There are sexual addictions. You know, people can damn near get hooked on anything these days. Fame. Yeah, um, addiction to fame, you're right. They're, they're, if I can throw them under the bus, there's a kid that was a few years younger than me in the high school that I, I went to up in North Jersey. Uh, his stage name is Tom Cruise. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And we used to drink together <laughs> mm -hmm. in school. But yeah. Any, anybody can have it, you know, yes. a, a lot of, a lot of things that we say is that there's a bell theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the bell theory is this, everybody has a bell. Okay. How many folks can go out with their buddies and just have a beer and walk out? Right. Well, I'm the guy who finishes my beer. And if you left half a beer, I'd finish yours and then get a six pack to go. You know, mm -hmm. it, when your bell goes off, it tells you to stop. You've had enough. Stop. Mm -hmm. Well, people with addictive personalities keep going. So right. My bell didn't work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. We actually have our first comment of the night come in 
um, um, as we wrapping things up for the show. Um, and this is by Mr. Jamal Hayward. He says, this is great. I love intelligent conversations and discussions that make a difference and involve real people with experiences that can help others. Thank you so much for that, brother. Salute. Thank you, Jamal. Yes. Uh, wasn't there a ranger you had to throw a shout out to? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Liz is on it. Um, shout out to Michael Callahan, senior airborne paratrooper. That's my daddy. <laughs> you know, Aww. Salute, salute that, um, you know, because both Mike and my father, Mike, is also were paratroopers. You know what I'm saying? A second airborne. You know what I'm saying? So salute to both of you all. My dad, you know what I mean? He's um, he's not moving around as good as Mike these days, but you know what I mean? He sends his love to you and thanks, Mike, for you know mentioning. I'm uh, speaking of my dad, the Thanks, Mike said all the way. That's right, right. I told him, and he all was like. Well, I told him what you say. I said all the way, and he said airborne. Yes, <laughs> that was his response. You know what I'm saying on his sick bed. But um, yeah, thank you both, Liz. Thank you, Jamal. Um, I want to, you know, as we end this show again, I just want to thank everyone so much, you know, for just being here today. Very grateful. You know, both um Mimi and I, and we're just gonna go around the the table, and you know, what I mean again. For everyone to just again remind people how they can uh, support your platform, please. So we'll start with um Mickey. Thank you again for having me. And Absolutely. all platforms. My Instagram is underscore I T S S dot M I K I star. And I have three songs out and I'm about to drop a new song. I was gonna drop it tomorrow, but I'm probably gonna do it next week because tomorrow's my birthday. So <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she said that really fast because I was about to I was about to say that. <laughs> oh no, my birthday is on Saturday. Cool, cool. Have, what's up, Leo? Your birthday on Saturday? Yeah, I'm I'm Saturday. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday. birthday. Hi, Leo. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Mickey. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Ooh, definitely. Yeah, how can they support you? I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> But they can support me. I'm on all platforms, Apple Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify. My name is Mickey Star, M-I-K-I Star. And then my Instagram is just my name, but it's uh, underscore I-T-S-S -S, and then Mickey Star. So I'm going to get back on TikTok too, y'all. Whenever I get back on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely highly recommend you all go and um, support Mickey Star. She's a super talent on her way all the way up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, if we can move down to Twix, you know, please, Queen, you know, let them know how they can support your platform and everything you got going on. Thank you again. And before I do that, I just want to tell Miss Mickey Starr um, that I have to also say that as a young person, you had the wisdom to not go further. You had enough in you to say, I don't need this. And that is, it takes a lot of steps. It takes a really big person mm -hmm. and, a, and a good character to be able to say that at such a young age, especially to your parent and the doctor and they're trying to give you something and you're like, no, my, I'm not, no, we're not doing this. So it takes a really big person to be able to do that. So I have to also say congratulations to you on stepping up for yourself and such a Follow yes. me on Instagram at uh, Twixmix Productions underscore underscore. Also on Foursquare Music. Um, and I hope to have your music on there soon, Miss Nikki Star. Um, <laughs> also, um, I do a lot of IG live shows. And I would love to have, you know, you guys on, schedule you there so that we can continue learning more about you individually. But other than that, I'm on Facebook under Tamika Allen mm -hmm. and or uh, Twix Mix Productions, and I just really appreciate this opportunity. So I have to tell you both, you know, I said it in Queen. Thank you guys for asking me to be a part of this panel because it was just so, there's so much more that I know that I can say, especially about my brother, because I too have a brother that suffers the way that yours did. Um, 
without, you know, taking himself where he's still here, but he is homeless and he's living a transient lifestyle. So we can talk a lot. And I'm sure you have some yeah. insight that you can help me out with uh, navigating that, that road there. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. I will definitely reach out. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. And um, again, um, Mike P., you know, if you can remind them how they can um, support the foundation again, what was the name of that foundation, too? It's the, the Nicholas Hudanich Foundation. Uh, we're on Facebook. Um, we have our fifth annual Rock for Awareness Music Festival at Community Park in Point Pleasant Borough. We have a lo local talent, a band called The Nerds. They've been okay. around since 82 or so. Uh, wow. We have another band called The Surge. And we have radio personality from 101.5, Bill Spadia. And uh, we're trying to get this thing going because addiction is only getting worse. Yes. And again, it, it starts with the prescription stuff and it just just keeps going, just keeps getting worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, actually, this is the flyer that Mike sent me. Yes. So this is the information that he's speaking about. So everyone can go in and screenshot that. So you had information October the 7th. Make sure you all are there and if you're in the area. Mark your calendar. That's right. Yeah. Um, so this is a moment in the show that traditionally, you know what I mean, we've been just doing, you know, just sincerely where, you know, we just, Mimi and I just, you know, give each other... Um, flowers and you know what I'm saying and give our guests their flowers and just tell how we really feel about them now respectfully I just met Mickey I just met Frank you know what I'm saying um Michael so I'm, why do I keep saying Frank I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't tell you why I keep saying Frank no disrespect Mike I tell you why I keep saying Frank because when I started poetry this has nothing to do with poetry but that's the only time in my in my mind in my brain that I can associate the letter P because when, when I started poetry 20 some years ago, I started at a club and it was hosted by Black Ice and Frank P. And so when I see the P, <laughs> my mind goes back to 20 some years. I think I have a glitch in my mind and my brain that's never been fixed. I apologize for that. I got to find a way to fix that. But so whenever I see P, I think of Frank P. Shout out to Frank P wherever he is in life right now. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's definitely Mike P. <laughs> yeah. My my sponsor's yeah. name is Frank, and, and it's funny because wow, his when he <laughs> speaks, you know, like in a in a meeting, you know, you 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 raise your hand, you want to talk, you say hi, I'm Mike so and so, and he always says it, Frank. So when he shares, <laughs> everybody says hi, Frank. You know, wow. So, it, it, it's funny like that. That's okay. I'm good with it. Okay. Well, wow. Look at the universe. Right. Showing up and showing up. I like, to, I, like to, I like to end everything on a joke because I made right. people cry for so many years. Right. So, do you all know who Mozart is? Yes. Um, yeah. The, the you musician. heard of Mozart? Yes. Yes. Famous Mozart. You have not heard of Mozart? You're in the music industry and you have not heard of Mozart? Uh-uh. <laughs> have you heard of Beethoven? Oh, I know Beethoven. Okay, you know what he's doing now? What is he doing? He's decomposing. Oh, really? Decomposing. <laughs> Composing, decomposing. That's funny. <laughs> that is also true. That is definitely true. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, oh my. With that with, with that being said, you know, so this is the point of the show where like I say, both Mimi and I just give each other um flowers and go around the table, you know, since Mickey is associated with Mimi, I allow um her to give her her flowers. I'm gonna give some flowers to um to um Twix and Frank, if I may. So right. always lady first. So Twix, if I may. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say how proud I am of you. You know, the short time that we've known each other has just been nothing but love. It's been sincere. 
you have really jumped out there. You and the whole CMP village have actually jumped out there and just really sincerely supported me, you know what I mean, all mm -hmm. the way from the West Coast, you know what I mean? I'm That's so right. grateful, you know what I mean? I already have so many people that I'm associated with on the West Coast that you all may or may not know, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had so much fun on your show. You interviewed me, and I've met a lot of people that do interviews, but some people, when they interview, you know, you can just know when, you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. not real with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you actually care. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we have a lot in common about, you know, when you interview people, the way that you do it. And you ask mm -hmm. me some very great questions. And it was just a memorable experience. I've been blessed to be interviewed many, 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 many times. But when I was interviewing your show, that's one that I put down in the book. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. one of my best times that I've ever been interviewed. Real talk. Because that's just how you Thank made you. me feel. And I just yeah. want to salute you today with everything that you've been doing and how you continue to open up doors for other people from the West Coast, from the East Coast, and around the world, you know what I'm saying, to just continue to reach out to people and invite everyone to be on your show as you were so humble to invite yeah. everyone that's here tonight to be on your platform. And that was Absolutely. really gracious to you. You know what I mean? That just speaks volumes of the type of person or who you are, you know what I mean, and yeah. how you move, and, you know, and we know that you're very spiritual as well. And um, I just want to salute you and, you know, speak on um, blessings over your life in abundance and just great things continue to happen to you. I think you're a beautiful soul, beautiful person. And um, you know what I mean? Much love and salute to you, Queen. Keep going, yes. you know, keep going hard and keep doing everything that you're doing. You know what I mean? I love it. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm not going to go long because I know that I can, but <laughs> what I want to say is I, I receive it and I thank you. But being in this group of people right here just goes to show that my prayers are working um, because I just pray to be in the midst of like-minded people who are ambitious about their passions. And I'm getting it. I'm receiving it abundantly. And I want to say thank you for being part of that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here again. And um, if I can move on to um, Mike, I almost said it again. I almost said the F word. <laughs> the F name. Mike, Mike, Mike. I should know this. That's my name. Y'all know that, right? It's not just I said it. My birth name is Michael Callahan the second. You hear me? But Mike P, man, brother, you know what I'm saying? Such a pleasure to have you on this show. Um, we had such a great conversation. You know, shout out to um Christina Edwards um for connecting us. God bless her. And I'm just gracious that you know she brought us together and for you to want to share your story on my platform today. Um, because I'm just really grateful, you know what I mean, to have people like you who's, you know, saying, like you say, you might not have been the, the nicest person in your past, but that was reason being you were addicted to, you know, saying alcohol and, you know, I mean, I've known a lot of people addicted to alcohol, so they're not always the most pleasant people, but the person that I see today, the person and character that you show here today is definitely an outstanding individual, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not judging you by your past. I'm judging you by your present and your future. You know what I'm saying? And I think you outstanding gentlemen. You know what I mean? I salute you, brother. And I'm very gracious to have you on the show. And thank you so much for um, using the words that Twix said, your vulnerability today to just share some of your past. Because, you know what I mean? That's so important to help others who has had a rough path and um, have gone through similar things that you have battled and overcome. And, and 26 years sober, that's a testimony in itself. That's older than Mickey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me throw that out there. <laughs> so, man, 26 years, man, that's unbelievable, brother. You know what I'm saying? Salute to you. And I want to just wish you know, great blessings onto you and a great abundance um, as you are going out your way to help people and to bring awareness to, you know what I mean, serious addictions and most being people that – um like you say, have suffered from heroin and other drugs with the foundation that you are a part of. So salute to you, King. Thank yes. you for being on the show today, man. And um, I'm grateful for you, man. And you're welcome to keep in touch. Holla at you. Absolutely. Th thank you. It, it was a nice experience. Um, Christine is watching the show. This is the second time she threw me under the bus. <laughs> the first time I had to speak in front of uh, an entire community at, wow. yeah, at our, our local uh, public library. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to say about Klein-Felter syndrome is that one out of 15,000 live births have the syndrome. Mm. Uh, there are women that have it. It's also called Turner syndrome. Mm. Uh, and the whole, the whole thing is that the side effects are one, one of the problems. It's called olfactory syndrome where you cannot put your thoughts into words mm -hmm. so people will ask you a question and expect a very quick answer and if you can't answer them they think you're making up an elaborate lie or a story right because you can't spit the words out fast enough i mean they're right here but you can't get mm -hmm. them out i right, can't process it mm -hmm. uh the other side effects were I, i've had dual mastectomies a year and a half apart I have breast cancer twice, wow. um, and it's all part of the Klein-Felter syndrome. Uh, if you look it up, it, it, it's really complicated, but what it all boils down to is a, a hormone de deficiency. And you wouldn't think at, you know, young, young men, how that would change their lives, but you go from one kid who, you know, two guys grow up on the same block and one kid excels to, he becomes the, you know, the, he's picked up first on all the teams while you're picked last and he's the quarterback and he goes to the, the you know, gets a scholarship to uprate college and meanwhile, you know, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel because you don't have that competitive edge right. mm. that everybody else has. And it's all because of genetics. My condition was not discovered until 1997. So I had been bouncing off the walls for 37 years. And where, where Mickey said no, I said yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Because I didn't want to be me. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Right. And it took a long time to recognize that. Uh, God bless case, you. There, there was a case study done uh, 10 years ago when they started uh, recording all state and federal inmates' DNA. There was a case study that discovered 40% of state and federal inmates have some form of Klinefelter syndrome or a mosaic of it. And it wasn't... Wow. It wasn't until uh, around 97 when all the new uh, DNA discoveries were made. Because prior to 97, the only way they could read your DNA was to cut open your head and take apart your pituitary gland until all the re more recent discoveries. You had a question? No, um, no questions, but I know that we are um, going over <laughs> into the timing of our show. But Mr. Mike P, you have a lot of nuggets to drop. And it looks like we're going to probably have to have another show where we have like a whole lot of this information um, to share because you have a lot of nuggets to drop. So I definitely appreciate that. I learned a lot tonight. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you again. Um, yes, Mike thank P. you so much. Mike P, not FP, but Mike P. Right. Um, Mike and with P. that being said, yeah, with that being said, Mimi, yes. that means you can tell us a little bit more about Mickey and how, you know I mean, you all maybe find each other in this universe and just tell us a little, you know, give her this girl her flowers. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. I'm going to definitely give her a whole lot of flowers. She's, she, she needs more than flowers. But um, so I had a very interesting surgery back in May of this year. Um, right. It was one of those. Um, it was a life or death type situation. And her mother was one of the wonderful individuals that took care of me. And, wow. um, and she showed me a video of Mickey. And I was like, OK, I like this little chick. OK, let's see where she's going. And, um, and I had the opportunity to meet her and, you know, went to the house, listened to her perform. And, you know, she had her vocal coach Dallas on there. And I was just like, okay, you know what? 
this little chick is going somewhere. And I am a very big protector of younger girls when it comes to this industry because the industry is full of demons. So I'm like, I'm one of those that's like, you know what? They're not going to have this little one right here. This little one right here is going to be super protected. So she's already super protected by mom, by nature. But when it comes to the industry, it's just something that I, I also have that it's like, I feel like I need to take both of them in my arms and just be like, look, you know. So at the end of the day, I'm giving mom Liz her flowers as well for bringing this beautiful, intelligent young lady into this world. I know she and said thank you. <laughs> one who's going to do mega, mega, mega things. And I keep telling her that this industry, the way that we're going to handle this is going to be via a um a, a marathon and not a sprint mm -hmm. so we're gonna definitely take our time and make this happen we are gonna reach out to you twix <laughs> okay so we will definitely make it happen but um mickey you are a gem thank and you i look forward to definitely working with you and taking yes, you to i'm top. so excited to just get started because i feel like this is really the beginning because i dropped my first song last year in november so it's like it's just starting you know and it's only yeah. up here yeah, <laughs> yes. definitely, definitely. And happy birthday, Mike. Happy Thank birthday. You. Happy, advance, birthday and happy birthday, to... Mickey. Yeah, happy birthday to Isaac. Day. Happy birthday I, to you I too. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Because I know yours is Saturday. So happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Happy You're birthday welcome. to you, Queen, young lady. You know, so I hope you enjoy yourself and make the most of it. You know what I mean? Um, and my only advice, um, and this is what I've learned because I've known people that have done too much on you. Like, you should turn up for your birthday. You should do what you want to do. But always have limitations, just like you do in life. Yes. Like, never, because people, unfortunately, have done too, went way too far and unfortunately not here anymore. Not feeling like, you know, I got to turn up the whole bottle. I got to smoke the whole blunt. Right. Whatever it is that you like to indulge in or whatever you like to do, party, whatever you do over there, you know what I'm saying, with your friends, just remember, still limitations for everything, you know what I'm saying, just like, yes. because it's still one day, it's one day, and one day and one moment can change your life. Yes, and she's going from 19 to 20. Wow. Yeah. So this is a very exciting birthday. I know, this yeah. is really exciting. It's like, I feel like 20 is still an awkward age, though, because it's like, it's like in the middle, because I'm just now reaching adulthood, for real, I'm not a teenager anymore, so it's like, Right. And, but I'm excited. I'm ready to see what my 20s bring me. But I'm, at the same time, I'm like, dang, I'm really 20. <laughs> like, I used to want to be this age. And now that I'm here, I'm just like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, wait till you reach 50. Anyway. 50? <laughs> Can I give her just a, a tip in on yes. auntie advice? I want to yes. give her some advice from TT uh, Twix. Yes. Um, <laughs> take it in stride. Enjoy each day. Do not overwhelm yourself. And understand that this is still closed. So it's not gonna open until you're about 24, 25. So just whenever you make a decision, just think it out with various scenarios. And if you can, you know, follow up with whatever that's gonna give you, then go right ahead for it because you're willing to, to have that experience. But if it's something that you're not willing to deal with the outcome, you might wanna change your mind. Don't do it. That's, yeah. that's the best advice I can give you at 20. Yes. Okay. okay. Take your time. Absolutely. Yes, I'm Absolutely. learning to just enjoy the journey and just live every day and just, you know, live life because, you know, whatever happens, happen. Whatever God has in store for me, I know that's what's in store for me, but I can't rush things because I've always been the type where it was like when I was younger, I've always wanted so much for myself. Like, I would be 15 and I'll be like, I want this and that, yada, yada, yada. But I have to learn you can't just rush everything. You have to let it just play in God's hands. And just let it play out, you know. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> amen to that. Yes. Um, shout out to my um my cousin Cynthia Jones. I'm checking in from the ATL, originally from North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you, Renee. Peace, Queen. Thank you, thank you. And again, thank you for everyone who was a, a guest tonight. You know what I mean? Sharing your stories again sharing your opinions, perspectives, any advice, mm -hmm. your wisdom, everything that was spoken about tonight. It was just a great conversation. 
very grateful to have each and every one of you all always gracious to have Mimi Acosta and always save her for last, but never least to give her her flowers. And I never, it never gets old. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love giving Mimi her flowers, you know what I'm saying? Because she's so supportive of everything that I do, you know what I'm saying? As you all know or may not know, she's obviously the co-host of here at the Square Table Talk Show. She's also the co-host of From Her Point of View um, Talk Show, along with Lili, the goddess, how to flow a peace queen, um, which is in season, finishing up season two, August the 1st. And then, you know what I mean, she's just been on the platform many times. I had the chance to interview her um, about her life. And that was like a documentary. I think it went like two hours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was just like really cool. And um, she's just been there since day one, ever since I met her. And never like turned her back to me and act like she didn't know her brother. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? So I'm just grateful for you, Mimi. And um, thank you for all the, uh, when I was in my accident, you know what I'm saying? You was there someone that I could trust to, you know what I mean, speak about because I was going through some depression because I had never experienced anything like a life and death type of mm-hmm. car accident like that, you know what I'm saying? And so you helped get me back to a place to where I feel comfortable going behind the camera because I was in such a depressing state of mind, like I couldn't even be behind a camera. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I've been in front of cameras for many and many years. But um, thank you for that, Mimi. I love you. Love you and too. thank you for just always having my back and you know what I mean every time I call on you you like you always show up and I know you be tired I know you be overworked overwhelmed with uh, everything else that you got going on and you manage somehow in your life but you always be there for me and like you know you just act like you don't know how to tell me no but I'm you're my to brother you, I gotta be there you for you tell me no sometimes <laughs> maybe I ain't gonna be mad at you <laughs> I, don't, uh-uh, I can't do it <laughs> <laughs> but no much love to you it. Much love to you, too. And thank you so much for always having me, having my back. You know, you're that brother. You're my brother, Mike. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. Love you, too, cuz. Thank you. I, I shall. Whatever God has for us. Yes. yes and so thank, thank everyone. You. Thank everyone. Thank everyone. Thank you, Twix. Thank you, Mike P. Mickey Star. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you all for being here. You all did unbelievable job you know what i mean um i know that it was more um that i know you would all like to say because you have such intelligence but you know the show's only so long and we went over 30 some minutes but it's okay because it, everything that was said was needed to be said i felt like yes you know what i mean so um just again just enjoy the rest of your day your upcoming weekend especially you mickey as you are out of your teens officially that is Finally. so powerful <laughs> Right. Finally. Uh, like that was such an overstatement. I'm watching you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have the bird eye over everywhere she goes, okay? Bird <laughs> eye. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm teasing, you know that. <laughs> Definitely enjoy yourself, a little Leo sister. I know I will. <laughs> you too. You thank have a good you. birthday as well. And you guys all have a good weekend. Thank you, thank you. Well. Absolutely, man. Drive safe, anyone that's in travel. Um, be safe. Enjoy your weekend. Much love to you all, and man, please just keep in touch. But um, you already know how I feel about y'all. If you don't know, rewind this tape. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, but much love to everyone. I appreciate y'all. Salute. And um, man, I don't know what else to say, but it's the end of the show, unfortunately. You said it. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that I said it. I said it. I said it. Management, MIA Entertainment Group. Yeah, it's in the building. Yeah. Peace to you. Until next Peace. time. Blessings. Be in touch. Absolutely. I'll share with you too, brother. All right. Good night, all. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Yo, peace and blessings. You definitely want to contact me today if you have your own podcast show, perhaps even your own radio show where you offer and feature different guests. Well, I now offer bookings that I said in management to where you can book you a legend, a celebrity, maybe even an icon. Depends on your budget. Contact me ASAP at I said it dot MC at gmail dot com. You already know why, because I said it.